Thank you, everybody, for attending our second presentation this morning. Um, got a pretty packed house in here, so excited about that. Um, this next presentation for our water reuse track is a, a case study in Washington. It's Cheney's purple or Cheney Washington's purple pipe project. It's going to be presented by Todd Abelman and Allison S. Felt. Uh, Todd is the director of public works for the city of Cheney. He graduated from Eastern Washington University with a Bachelor of Science degree in construction engineering with disciplines in civil, structural, electrical, and mechanical engineering. He has 28 years of experience in municipal public works administering the planning, building, transportation, water, solid waste, and wastewater departments. Um, meanwhile, Allison Asphalt is a wastewater or is a water treatment system process engineer and partner in Asphalt Environmental Engineering in Spokane, Washington. She graduated from UCLA in 1993 with a Bachelor of Science degree in civil engineering uh, from, and from the University of California, Berkeley in 94 with a Master of Science degree in environmental engineering. She also has 28 years of experience as an environmental engineer specializing in the planning and design of treatment systems for water, industrial, uh, domestic wastewater, and reclaimed water. She is a registered PE um, in water supply and wastewater engineering. With that, I'd like to, I think Todd's going to kick it off. So thank yes, you, Todd. I'll try. Can you hear me? Oh, gosh. A lot of, <laughs> lot of people out here. I just want to kind of do a quick survey just so as we work, work through the presentation. I know a few people out there. How many are actually operators? And then how many are engineers? Okay, okay. And then how many are project managers, finance agencies? Okay, I'm trying to, trying to uh, narrow down this, uh, this uh, presentation and, and try to get the best information out to each individual. So we'll get started. I'll give you a little, Little history of the wastewater treatment plant in 1994, uh, city of Cheney transitioned from advanced uh, to, uh, to an advanced treatment system from a lagoon system. Um, we also obtained 500 acres around the plant. So we're kind of this little island away from the city on the downhill side. Uh, out of that 500 acres, we constructed 100 acres of wetlands. And in 2007, we did an engineering study that concluded that we could provide 1 million gallons of reclaimed water out of the wetlands without with the, maintaining the viability of the constructed wetlands. About 11 years later, or so about nine years later, we did in 2016, we did an engineering study, which was approved by the Department of Ecology uh, based on the alternatives on reclaimed water, based on the 1 million gallons that we targeted. Here's our uh, uh, wastewater treatment plant. And you can see uh, in 1994, the operations began. And in 2010, we did do an upgrade. We doubled the capacity of our collector tanks. We added more aeration uh, basin uh, aerators on these two giant aerators that are four. Clarifiers stayed the same. We did add an extra capacity on the sludge storage tank and we doubled the capacity of our composting building. Uh, one thing that we do is we provide our own biosolids composting and we sell it back to the public. Um, we're in short supply, seems like every year. We've been doing that since 94. Um, pretty interesting process. Constructed wetlands. This is 100 acres of wetlands, cell A. You see it's dry, it's really never been uh, tapped by our effluent. Cell L is a, uh, an old lagoon that we took out of service and put back into service when the treatment plant was open. So B, C, and D, and those cells basically hold all of our, all of our wastewater, unless we have a discharge, discharges down what we call mini creek. We haven't had a discharge uh, in several years. So let's keep it simple. The project objectives provide uh, a source supply of 1 million gallons per day and reduce the demands of the existing potable water source. So that was kind of the objectives going into it. What do we do and where were the needs? Well, one of the needs are, we hate to see this, uh, telling all of our residents that we have no water. 
you know, we, we need to cut back on our potable water supply because of irrigation demand. So, you know, you can't dress this up uh, anyway because when you when you tell people to stop uh, you're using irrigation, cap your run times down, uh, shutting off schools and parks and playgrounds, it becomes a problem. It becomes a nightmare. It even becomes a nightmare to try to monitor, you know, who is actually out watering between two and three a.m. in the morning, and how do you how do you keep that water reservoir up there? So we've uh, struggled with that. And that's because we have uh, approximately eight wells and they're in a basalt aquifer. They're uh, strategically located and basically a basalt aquifer uh, is best described for me is like putting a straw in a sponge and trying to suck water out of it. So we do have a limited supply in Chini on uh, pumping demand, but this basalt aquifer is a, is a regional issue. So even if Chini grows or outside region grows, if we tap into that basalt aquifer, that's our main concern, is the declining of the potable water. So in looking at our demand, where were we spending all of our water? Obviously we knew the summertime supply was the most. The pumping capacity in the winter time, we had about 18 gal uh, 1,800 gallons per minute of surplus in the winter time, but then when you are in the, uh, in the winter time, with an average of about 1,200 gallons per minute maximum, during that winter time but yet when we go to the pumping capacity in the summertime we looked at about a 400 gallon deficiency in the summertime and that doesn't even include the peaks where we had to kind of cut back so it was right around 2250 or 2300 gallon per minute max state of man in the summertime that was kind of our goal to take a look at where we could best apply reuse water so give you an example of how we decline uh, when we started our pumps, and this is just a pumping total for 2015, when we started our pumps, this is what we run. November and December, we run two pumps. We start cranking up three pumps in all the way through January and March. April, we get online. But by May through September, we are actually have all pumps on. And you can see the pumping capacity. Pumping capacity in May dwindles down to 1772. Our wells are very deep. And all of a sudden we start losing that pumping head. So we have to throttle back our pumps. So that was the struggle. The struggle is right in this area where the hottest part of the year and the lowest pumping. Pumping volumes from 2004, kind of the select years, you can see that in January, and February, March, we start inclining. Everybody that, that has irrigation on the top of water system sees that and then we decline back down. But the 100 million gallons per month was really the target area of right about 2,300 gallons per minute. This is out of our water system plan. In taking a look from 2018 all the way up, we realized that we had a max day demand of about 2,200. That's where that 2,250 came in. And in 2028, we were looking at 25 and then the entire system by 2038, 29, 55. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. All right. So okay. So the other study uh, called for is where are we uh, spending most of our water? So in our, in our water report in the indoor, we were very good. And that's, that's typically what happens is that on the indoor side, uh, Cheney is uh, basically Eastern Washington University is home to Cheney, and uh, uh, we have more more multifamilies than than basically housing families. So in our indoor use, we really are pretty much um, low the national average, but our outdoor use is pretty much higher, about a thirty two percent overage in what we spend in our in our outdoor. So based on the study, um, we had some project alternatives. Uh, we can do nothing, that's the least cost. Continue to do the irrigation, cut back on, on water usage, uh, may reduce economic development. Um, yeah, there is, there was uh, you know, concerns from anybody coming in that wants to do housing, uh, whether Cheney had water, we have potable water. It's, it's basically in the drinking water source. We struggle when we do the irrigation and may reduce the city recreational program opportunities. And that was, that was crucial, the recreational opportunities. Uh, when you take a look at the Cheney School District uh, in there, when the fields are dry during the fall, the fields get hard. 
and it, it's very hard to activate uh, football, soccer, baseball when all the all the lawns are green. So, uh, drill a new groundwater supply. That's really less cost alternative, uh, but there's no guarantee of the reliable source. Like I say, we have eight wells that pump, and uh, our well number eight was the, the latest well that we had, um, new well that we had contributed back in 2010, started out to be about 800 gallon producer. Now it's down to just under 200. So that kind of gives you an idea of where we're looking at as decline. So uh, import and purchase water from City of Spokane for you in the area. City of Spokane, our water main is about 12, 14 miles away. That would be an option for the City of Spokane, but also in City of Spokane, if we sign up to do their water, they do have restrictions and we might only for emergency purposes only. So the value of what we get out of the water right now, that wasn't really an option uh, to look at. So we did propose the uh, Purple Pipe project. So here are some of the benefits, provides a new re reliable source. Um, it eliminates that mandatory, it's gonna bridge that gap between our shortage. Um, it does reduce the withdrawals from the city's potable water, uh, supports economic development, supports recreational activities because where we're gonna put the water is pretty much concentrated around the parks and the play fields as of now, as we expand on. Uh, provides a water resource that will increase with development as more connect to our wastewater treatment plant, that 1 million gallon per day could go up. And it provides a distribution of infrastructure for potential sources of non potable water, such as treated stormwater. So the way we're set up at the bottom of the hill, we not only have our, our uh, wastewater coming down, but a majority of our stormwater is separated, but it does come down into uh, some of uh, our wetlands. And it provides a water source, uh, not relying on imported water associated with restrictions and potential price increases. So once we, once we get that established, uh, it is a source. And we're able to modernize uh, the electrical equipment at the city treatment plant and utilize the facilities for storage and, and uh, reclaim water. Champion of thanks. So uh, basically the pro project was is re uh, the, the sites that we're looking at. In the city of Cheney, um, um, we have some parks and, and baseball fields. So we took a look at uh, some of the parks. We took a look at some of the parks in the future. So if we start the project, uh, we get the, the treatment facility, the pumping station, and at least the distribution main up to town. Uh, we're going to focus on uh, some of the bigger areas of irrigation. And then we also took a look at future expansion, just extending that purple pipe. Most of uh, what you see here is the majority of the green spaces that we have applied to. And then also Eastern Washington University, they're just right across the street. They are very interested in potentially uh, doing some of their play fields in the future. We also had a cemetery uh, that we, also, we took a look at. Cheney, uh, not a fairly large town, but so we are compact. Uh, kind of give you an idea. This is the uh, wastewater treatment plant. This is where the uh, treatment and the pumping station will go. This is a purple pipe that goes all the way up through town. Those stars are where we connect currently. Those stars out there is a future for the connection of the purple pipe. Reclaimed water treatment. Uh, as you see, this is our existing uh, treatment facility. So this is a chlorine contact basin right through here. We're gonna go with the new final treatment building at which we'll supply the filters and the, on the UV system. We are gonna turn this reservoir into a storage area and we're gonna cover it. And this is the insulation of the new reclaimed pump that actually is in the distribution line will be connected to that and pumps up town. This is a lower end of town. So you're looking at a, a pretty good uh, height a push all the way up to the town. So when we took a look at the quality of the water, um, we had to uh, meet the requirements of, of chapter of, of the wax and the reclaim water, uh, chemical co coagulation, filtration, disinfection will remove the pathogens from the water. So it'd be safe for irrigation. Project planning and design documents have been approved by the Washington State Department of Health and Ecology, I believe. Here are some of the uh, parameters of the water quality. This is uh, uh, what we, we had to uh, kind of meet. Okay. 
and then also some of the environmental and cultural studies uh, that we, uh, we, we, some of the studies like the biological resource uh, memorandum with no effect determination, wetlands assessment, uh, we, we did cultural resource and survey, and we also did the environmental assessment. Again, with, with really no potential adverse impact, we are completing uh, basically a NEPA process and that should be completed in the fall of 2022. So the wetlands assessment, uh, as far as the assessment goes, as you can see, we're, we're, we're turning up the, the purple pipe right through here. We're coming right in here. We have a few wetlands that we have to cross. We also have to cross two uh, major railroad lines underneath there. And then before we head up to the uptown. You can see a lot of the permits, the reclaim water permit, um, the JARPA permit, building permits, excavation and grading, construction stormwater permits, air quality permits and railroad crossing agreements, two railroads underneath, uh, extending a carrier, 30 inch, 36 inch carrier, I believe uh, with our pipe. A lot of things in play. Get down to our construction timeline. Uh, right now we have a, uh, we're waiting for uh, some of our electrical bids. We've already bid the uh, bid them. And, and again, with the supply and demand that we're facing, uh, these been postponed probably until either the end of 2022 or 2023. Uh, looking at uh, the, the reclaim treatment facility, and uh, that will be bid as soon as the, uh, if we get approval from the NEPA, we'll go out to bid on that. Hopefully we can get that done in 2023, 2024. And then moving right along, as we phase this out, we'll take a look at the at the reclaim pump storage station and the reclaim water distribution, and hopefully with the construction complete uh, in 2026. Always a cost. Um, so we we had some construction costs, so we kind of broke it down uh, into phases because we weren't uh, too confident that that agencies, grants between Washington and federal grants uh, would actually give us the, a full boat uh, of, the, of what we were trying to take a look at. So by taking a look and piecemealing this, how can we actually put this in phases and extend it over uh, a number of years and still be able to actively uh, request for funding from uh, 2022 to 2026? So we kind of set this into phases. Uh, kind of the estimated of, of those phases. The, as you see, the water reclaim treatment system, the pump station and distribution were really the focus points, uh, the large ticket items that we, we have in the, in the funding package. Construction funding amount, uh, 10,850, but I just received word that they're gonna bump that up to the 11 million, which was great. Um, we had a, a loan from the Washington State Department of Ecology, 1.2% loan. Bigger loan, but when we get more and more uh, funding coming in, uh, we're just gonna utilize that loan to kind of pay the balance. Uh, we just received, and it was talked about last, the US Bureau of Reclamation grant. Uh, we were awarded 5.4 million in that grant funding. The Department of Commerce grant uh, was state allocated. Uh, what's important here is when you put these projects together, uh, that you have a good team all around, um, working with not only our local, um, council members and mayors, but also our state legislatures to really bring uh, what the use was, what the need was for the legislature. So happy to report uh, that we got uh, money from the Department of Commerce of 11 million. Prior to that, we had $2 million uh, that we spent on the UV system and the filtration system. So everything is kind of coming together. Kind of did an estimated cost uh, per rate as the funding we see now, as an increase from the sewer or the water. And that is pretty much to operate and then pay off whatever the remaining debt is. If we get a full grant, I mean, that, that's just a bonus. So I was conscious of time and I could move on to that. Oh, I guess we got till 9.25 or 9.15. So. Yeah, we've got lots of time for questions. So thank you, Todd. Mm -hmm. um, great. I have a couple of questions, but do we have a few from the audience first? You mentioned uh, UV and 
Sorry. You mentioned UV and chlorine contact basins. Are you moving towards UV now? We are moving towards UV. Yeah. And as when the expansion was back in 2010, we were looking actually at UV, but it wasn't really in the budget. So when we brought back this project, we knew that we had to uh, kind of take away and replace the 1994 chlorine contact basin. So that UV is a, a basically the, the plan is being built right next to it so we can operate the chlorine contract basin until we switch over to the UV. Gotcha. Yep. Let me see if I can get back. What kind of filters are you adding for your final effluent? I'm going to leave that to the engineering, but let me let me get back on the questions. I'll show you a picture. We'll show you a picture here. Aquaduct, aquadist. Basically, it's a pile cloth disc filter. One thing about this project, and I didn't mention it earlier, um, really what's important when you take a look at these projects is to get the right team together. And, and what, what was really unique about this is that you've got to involve not only your lo local legislative, you've got to involve your agencies that have potential uh, funding sources so they are aware of this project. You have to uh, have the right environmental team to come into play. And uh, I always believe that we have to even get our operators on board as part of the design process. So Allison took two of, uh, two of our operators and went all around the state to take a look at cloth filters and UV systems. Um, we visited, I don't know how many, uh, over 20, <laughs> over 20, over 20 uh, uh, scheduled appointments, take a look at the operations and uh, pretty much made the determination of the, of the filter, the aqua, aqua disc, um, easier maintenance, uh, um, probably a little bit more or less cost in the future. Simple to operate. Simple to operate, yep. And proven, proven track record. Filter, this is our UV disinfection. Thanks, Todd, Allison. Um, how did the permitting go? Any challenges with permitting? Any um, how that? How was that process? As far as uh, the permitting to uh, um, approval from the Department of Ecology or all the other uh, permits that were involved, just maybe both, but Department of Ecology in particular. Well, Department of Ecology is here, so I think that was a great. <laughs> 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 no, uh, uh, you know we 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 have a long history uh, with the Department of Ecology uh, way back to 1994. Uh, uh, so so we do have a good relationship with that. So the process. Uh, along with, with Allison doing a great job. Uh, I, I really wasn't involved too much in the process. Alan just kind of, Allison just kind of kept me updated uh, when it came to the decision point. So I don't know if you'd like to comment on any time. Yes, Who, how many people from ecology are here? We love you guys, <laughs> love you. They uh, provided us a um, really nice um, forgivable principle loan um, for the design part. So essentially 50% of the design was a grant. And uh, Cynthia Wall is here, she's a big part of that. Lucy Peterschmidt back there, she reviewed all the technical documents and made sure that they were acceptable and gave us approval in time to get the funding that we need. So that part was great. Um, as you know, there's a lot of other environmental permits that we had to secure. Um, is anyone, is Vince Barthels here from Tino? So we used him, he's actually also on the city council for Cheney, and we used him for a lot of the environmental studies and permitting, so that streamlined that process really well. Um, if you are going to ever apply to U.S. Bureau of Reclamation for funding, uh, keep in mind the NEPA process. Um, in, in our situation, uh, we did the environmental assessment uh, with city funds, However, um, we had to actually go enter in, the city had to enter into an, inter, in a, in, into an agreement with the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation for them to federalize the environmental assessment, which cost another thirty to $40,000 on top of the um, fee that was paid to TNO to do the environmental assessment. And that, pro that process took a long time. Um, so if you are planning to, you know, to apply to the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation, U.S. Bureau, USBR, um, for funding. Um, you know, you have the feasibility study that you need to get approved. Then you have the application that you need to do, which is actually more like a report than just a funding application. Um, and then you have the environmental assessment, which can, you know, be over a hundred thousand dollars 
um, worth of work. So all of that process um, probably delayed the project at least a year um, because you can't, um, you can't disturb any dirt on the project um, before you get the, um, go through the NEPA process. So that's why we haven't been able to disturb any dirt, <laughs> do any digging, excavation, anything um, until we get the FONSI finding of no significant impact um, from USBR. Anything else on fun? No, okay. Great. It, the, the important process was is that uh, the timeline, uh, we had secured about $13 million uh, from the Department of Commerce uh, on the Washington side of it. Uh, we heard of the, of the wind grant coming through or the federal grants um, and we worked with uh, our local um, council members to let them know there is no guarantee, but we feel that we needed to go through the NEPA process. It was going to cost anywhere from 100 to 150,000 by the time we got done. Uh, there was no guarantee we'd get any federal funding, but uh, it proved that uh, the return on our investment, we did get the 5.4 million uh, expending that extra environmental cost on that. Um, I have a question about CECs. Did anyone from your community express concern about CECs or PFAS in the reclaimed water? And if so, um, what did you do to address it? You know, we, we, we have not received any uh, uh, real comments as we, we kind of pulled together. Um, we did do a, a water conservation study, which brought the community in. Um, the understanding uh, of, the, of the water reuse, what's the important portion of it. Uh, they, they were uh, pretty much uh, supportive of this project. Uh, during the water conservation side of it as well, um, we looked uh, at, at not only using the purple pipe for reuse, uh, but potentially uh, years down the road is maybe trying to look at recharging our, our system. Um, new technology out there, uh, but, but there is some potentials of finding more uses for the water reuse because we are only going to use our, our water reuse uh, basically May uh, through September. So there is, there is some others. But no, we didn't uh, receive any uh, uh, pushback, negative comments. Uh, we, we did it right. We, we had several uh, public meetings on not only the reuse project, uh, we put that in an element into our uh, water system plan. And then we did a separate study on water conservation. Keep in mind water reuse, uh, that, that kind of gets us out of, the, out of the woods for a little while, but it's important to understand that we still have a declining uh, water aquifer. So uh, what we need to do is start uh, looking at conservation measures. So uh, the, the emblem that you see at the beginning, uh, we created Cheney scapes. It's kind of like Spokane scapes. It's, it's a offering uh, all information on on low tolerant or zero tolerant uh, irrigation or, or landscape in front of your houses and developing uh, kind of a rebate program. So we're kind of following in the region how we can kind of address not only water conservation, but also our reuse of our water, so. I'm wondering if there is a concern for long-term irrigation using reuse water that may have higher mineral content, or if you'll be blending it with the drinking water to I'll let that. Allison answer that. There was a, there was a question about if if our if our uh, water quality can we actually blend our water? Yeah. So um, we um, obviously when we did the facilities plan for the report, um, ecology and the Department of Health, um, Mom Dew is here today as well. Um, we are required to analyze the effluent water quality. Um, and in this case, we're using it for agricultural irrigation. So we need to make sure that we apply the reclaimed water at agronomic rates. And so we look at things like salts um, and nutrients. Um, those are the principal things we look at. Um, the city does do some effluent monitoring for priority pollutants. Um, and uh, so we have that data, but usually that's, um, majority of those are non-detect. And so I'd have to get back to you on if, if they have had any detection of any um, you know, micro constituents um, on their monitoring, but they also have a, a pretreatment program as well. So they do monitor what goes into the plant as well for um, priority pollutants. Um, and also one thing um, which Todd alluded to was when we did this uh, facilities plan and the study for the project, we did look at using one of the city's um, existing reservoirs that's not being used for a point of blending. 
So it was City Reservoir One. It's kind of closer to Eastern Washington University. Um, and I think that's going, uh, going to be going to undergo some repair work, correct? City Reservoir Zero is what we were oh. going to get. Oh, yeah, Zero, sorry. Anyway, so we were going to use an existing unused reservoir for blending if we needed to improve water quality um, for irrigation. But at this point, um, that's not part of this existing project. Um, honestly, we're just trying to do one step at a time. So the first thing is the electrical upgrades, treatment system, the pump station, and the force main. And then if we, um, by some miracle, get more money, if the city gets more money, <laughs> then we can look at um, fixing up the reservoir and then looking at blending options and also looking at maybe stormwater um, treatment options or using some existing city wells that may not meet um, drinking water standards and pumping those into the reclaim water line. So we're just kind of designing or, or really looking at every single option um, and seeing what makes sense uh, financially and also for water quality. We've got time for about two more questions. I'm not sure if any anyone has something that hasn't been addressed. Oh, another one in the front. So you mentioned you're building the storage for your reclaimed water. Can you talk about how large that is relative to your capacity? <laughs> uh, I think what, what, I think right around five million gallons uh, on that on that. So and that's uh, pretty much one to one, isn't it? On our capacity, you're, you're asking the question: What is our storage capacity for compared to the plant? Yeah. So um, I think that is a. Uh, I may be wrong, and unless the operators know, our re-irrigation pond area is right about five million. Is that right? Okay, thank you. And and also that that re-irrigation um, area was not the. It is actually discharged out into our 100 acre wetlands. So that's all of our storage. So um, pretty much our plant's effluent is going through that and then discharging out to our wetlands. So the reuse portion of it will still pull from that pond area, uh, a portion of that and a portion of it will still be going out to uh, recharge the wetland. If that, if that answers your question. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. What, when, when did the program start for those of you that may not have heard it? Like what, what was kind of the motivating factor, the tipping point? Well, uh, you know, I guess if you're going to frame it, the, really the, the vision started um, probably way back in 88 when the, when the city was put on notice that they had to uh, either deal with their lagoon system and build an advanced treatment plant. And uh, so uh, uh, we, we got, uh, again, a team together, uh, which involved uh, the leader of the team was uh, Larry Esfeld, uh, designed the plant, um, uh, basically took, uh, took the plant's location and built it over two lagoons that we took out of site and uh, created a hundred acre wetland, all within the vision of water reuse. Because our, our, we, it's, we, we call it a wastewater treatment plant, but really it is a wastewater treatment and reclamation plant. So in '94, uh, when we started operations, we went right to we went right to biosolids composting, and and we we take a look at we took our biosolids and we put it in compost with the vision to do reuse. Um, not only we we just had the opportunity back in 2016 um, to actually do the engineering study because there's a lot of concerns with reuse early on, so we had to kind of be a little patient, and and we really didn't have the funding. Uh, move forward. So to answer your question, about a 25 year is when we really started visioning. And, um, you know, when we got the USBR grant, that was pretty much a reality that that says, wow, we can now really make this, we think we can really make this happen. Not that we're, we're not, we're, we're still going to be asking for more money. So here we come <laughs> next legislation. Um, but but yeah, that's what it takes. It, it just takes a lot of creativity. It just takes a lot of breakdown and it just takes a lot of persistence at trying to find the funding. Um, when you have a good valid cause of what we need to do with our reuse. So. Great, and I had one final question, uh, very generic, but very important. What was your biggest lesson learned so far as you went through this process? Well, my biggest lesson learned. Wow, that's uh, that's almost like an interview question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, uh, you know, like I say, I had I had history um, 
from 94 when the, when the plant was, was coming through. So I think my, my biggest lesson learned is just what I said previously. I, I never thought this would, would be a reality. I mean, there were so many mixes in the place when you take a look at, um, you know, between uh, designing the concept, uh, trying to find the funding, but yet getting support of not only the community, but also your local legislatures and mayors and everybody else, because at the end of the day, uh, your council has to be supportive of it. They, you know, we got to get that majority vote to, to move forward and, and very happy to report that all of our council members unanimously love this project. So I think the, the biggest um, uh, lesson learned for me is, um, you know, putting the right team together and being persistent, but also um, pretty much communicating to everybody. In a small town, um, you know, my guys will show up, the director of public works, they're not uh, kind of in an office. I mean, I'm, they see me out driving all over all of our projects to that end, and I'm meeting with uh, public works committees council members and I do have that latitude back and forth so it, it, it's it's a it's a unique environment when you want to put um, this type of package together all the hard work that goes involved and also the engineering team um, at, uh, Allison Esfeld is here and Larry Esfeld was basically the leader uh, they had over 25 years at the plant supporting our needs so great great q a session um, huge thank you to uh, Todd and Allison all right, thank you.